If you think back to the time when the airplane was first invented, and then look at military aircraft from World War II to our current technological wonders, it's absolutely mind-blowing to see how far we've advanced. To give you an idea, imagine a modern aircraft carrier going back in time to 1941, like in the movie The Final Countdown. A single modern F-22 could probably take out a whole army squadron on its own, or a single military bomber wins an entire war. Think that's impossible? Then check out these most insane military aircraft. Xing Kong 2 the DF-17, China's greatly feared hypersonic missile that was first revealed at the National Day military parade on October 1st, might not be the only hypersonic aircraft program China possesses, a report by the state broadcaster suggested. According to Ma, the Xing Kong-2 is still in the trial phase and more tests are expected. The Xing Kong-2 Ma referred to is the first Chinese Wave Rider hypersonic vehicle unveiled by the country dating a year earlier than the DF-17. The Xing Kong-2 was successfully tested at a target range in northwest China in August 2018 and is not likely to enter Chinese military service as early as 2019. The CCTV program introduced two genres of hypersonic aircraft. One is a glide boost, meaning the aircraft is propelled into the sky via a rocket and glides in the air using shockwaves generated by its own hypersonic flight, while the other is air breathing, meaning the aircraft uses a scramjet engine to provide thrust. Launched on a rocket, the Wave Rider was released in the air after about 10 minutes. It flew independently, made large angle turning maneuvers, and landed in the target area as planned. The flight vehicle reached 30 kilometers in altitude at Mach 5.5 to 6, the Academy said. The current generation of anti-missile defense systems is mainly designed to intercept cruise and ballistic missiles, which are either slower or easier to predict, making them possible to intercept. But the trajectory of a wave rider is relatively unpredictable in the glide, and it flies so fast that it possesses an extreme challenge to current anti-missile defense systems. Any rocket has the potential of launching a wave rider and the Wave Rider can carry both conventional and nuclear warheads. Lockheed SR-71 Blackbird No reconnaissance aircraft in history has operated globally in more hostile airspace or with such complete impunity than the SR-71, the world's fastest jet-propelled aircraft. The Blackbird's performance and operational achievements placed it at the pinnacle of aviation technology developments during the Cold War. During the Cold War, this plane could fly higher and faster than any other, and 55 years after its first flight, it still does. The Lockheed SR-71, designed in secrecy in the late 1950s, was able to cruise near the edge of space and outfly a missile. To this day, it holds the records for the highest altitude in horizontal flight and the fastest speed for a non-rocket-powered aircraft. It was part of a family of spy planes built to venture into enemy territory, without being shot down or even detected, in a time before satellites and drones. The black paint job, designed to dissipate heat, earned it the name Blackbird, and paired with the sleek lines of the long fuselage, made the plane look unlike anything that had come before, a design that hasn't lost any of its brilliance. Because the aircraft was designed to fly faster than 2,000 miles per hour, friction with the surrounding atmosphere would heat up the fuselage to a point that would melt a conventional airframe. The plane was therefore made of titanium, a metal that was able to withstand high temperatures while also being lighter than steel. Using titanium presented other problems, however. First, a whole new set of tools, also made of titanium, had to be fabricated because regular steel ones shattered the brittle titanium on contact. Second, sourcing the metal itself proved tricky. The USSR was, at the time, the greatest supplier of titanium in the world. The US government had to purchase a lot of that probably using bogus companies, said Merlin. The initial aircraft were flown completely unpainted, showing a silver titanium skin. They were first painted black in 1964 after the realization that black paint, which efficiently absorbs and emits heat, would help lower the temperature of the entire airframe. The Blackbird was born. This Blackbird accrued about 2,800 hours of flight time during 24 years of active service with the U.S. Air Force. On its last flight, March 6, 1990, Lieutenant Colonel Ed Yielding and Lieutenant Colonel Joseph Vita set a speed record by flying from Los Angeles to Washington, D.C. in 1 hour, 4 minutes, and 20 seconds, averaging 3,418 kilometers 2, miles per hour. At the flight's conclusion, they landed at the Washington Duels International Airport and turned the airplane over to the Smithsonian. The fuselage of the SR-71 included some of the very first composite materials ever used in an aircraft, which made the plane harder to spot for enemy radar. 
It was essentially stealthy before the word stealth was even used, said Merlin, flying at a higher altitude than any anti-aircraft fire could reach, faster than a missile and barely visible to radar, the Blackbird could enter hostile airspace practically undisturbed. The idea was that by the time the enemy detected it and fired their missile, it was already on its way out, Merlin explained. But this was before we had real-time data links. So they were taking pictures on film and bringing the film back to base to be processed and studied. As a result, no Blackbird was ever shot down by enemy fire. However, its reliability was an issue, and 12 out of 32 were lost to accidents. It was also a complicated plane to operate and fly. It took an army of people to prepare the aircraft. A Blackbird operational mission essentially had a countdown, like a space mission did. Because there was so much preparation involved in both getting the crew ready and the vehicle ready, an unbelievable amount of effort and manpower, said Merlin. The pilots also had to suit up in a special way due to the extreme conditions found at high altitude. They basically wore a spacesuit, the same sort of thing you would later see space shuttle crews wearing, said Merlin. The cockpit also got very hot when flying at high speeds, so much the pilots used to warm up their meal on long missions by pressing it against the glass. No Blackbirds were ever flown over Soviet airspace, something the US government stopped doing entirely after the 1960 incident, but they still played an important role in the Cold War and performed missions in other critical theaters such as the Middle East, Vietnam, and North Korea. XB-70 Valkyrie the XB-70 Valkyrie was the prototype version of the planned B-70 nuclear-armed deep-penetration strategic bomber for the United States Air Force, which was designed back in the 1950s. It was designed by North American Aviation and had six jet engines which were capable of cruising for thousands of miles at speeds Mach 3 plus at an altitude of 70,000 feet. Because the aircraft flew so fast, it was thought that the XB-70 would be almost immune to any other jet aircraft trying to shoot it down. The aircraft was so fast that it would spend only a few minutes over a particular radar station, flying out of range before the controllers could position their fighters in a suitable location for an interception, and the high altitude could not be matched by any Soviet jet fighter at the time. But the introduction of the first Soviet surface-to-air missiles in the late 1950s put the near invulnerability of the B-70 in doubt. Therefore, missions were flown at low-level altitudes, which offered no advantage over the B-52 bomber it was supposed to replace, and the project was scrapped. Only two of these seven $750 million aircraft were produced with one that crashed as it collided with a smaller aircraft. The last remaining Valkyrie bomber is in the National Museum of the United States Air Force near Dayton, Ohio. North American X-15 like many X-Series aircraft, the X-15 was designed to be carried aloft and drop-launched from under the wing of a B-52 mothership, and it used two reaction motors XLR-11 liquid propellant rocket engines, enhanced to provide a total of 16,000 pounds force of thrust. But by November 1960, reaction motors was able to deliver the XLR-99 rocket engine, generating 57,000 pounds force of thrust. The XLR-99 used anhydrous ammonia and liquid oxygen as propellant, and hydrogen peroxide to drive the high-speed turbopump that delivered propellants to the engine. It could burn 15,000 pounds of propellant in just 80 seconds. The X-15's official world record for the highest speed ever recorded by a manned-powered aircraft set in October 1967 when William J. Knight flew Mach 6.72 at 102,100 feet. That's a speed of 4,520 miles per hour and has remained unchallenged as of the making of this video. During the X-15 program, 13 flights by eight pilots met the Air Force space flight criterion by exceeding the altitude of 50 miles, thus qualifying these pilots as being astronauts. Three X-15s were built, flying 199 test flights, the last one on 24 October 1968. B-2 Spirit Many of you are probably familiar with the Northrop Grumman B-2 Spirit Stealth Bomber. It is a flying wing design with a crew of two that looks like something out of futuristic sci-fi movies, and the destructive capabilities of the B-2 match its awe-inspiring design. The bomber can deploy both conventional and thermonuclear bombs, such as 8,500-pound GPS-guided bombs or 16,2400-pound B-83 nuclear bombs. The B-2 is the only acknowledged aircraft that can carry large air-to-surface standoff weapons in a stealth configuration and is capable of all-altitude attack missions up to 50,000 feet, with a range of more than 6,000 nautical miles on internal fuel and over 10,000 nautical miles with one mid-air refueling. The B-2 Spirit has been in service since 19. 
1997 and is only the second aircraft designed to have advanced stealth technology after the Lockheed F-117 Nighthawk attack aircraft. Though designed originally as primarily a nuclear bomber, the B-2 was first used in combat dropping conventional, non-nuclear ordnance in the Kosovo War in 1999. It later served in Iraq, Afghanistan, and Libya. NASA X-43 the X-43 was part of NASA's HyperX program and was a small unpiloted test vehicle measuring just over 12 feet long and only weighed 3,000 pounds. The X-43A was designed to be fully controlled in high-speed flight even when gliding without propulsion. The craft was created to develop and test a supersonic combustion ramjet or scramjet engine, an engine variation where external combustion takes place within the air that is flowing at supersonic speeds. The X-43 did not take off on its own and was loaded on the belly of a B-52 Stratofortress bomber, and then then dropped from high altitude where it would then fire its Pegasus booster, separate from the booster, and switch to the scramjet. The first test failed as the booster moved off course and the craft was shot down for safety reasons. In the second test in March 2004, the Pegasus fired successfully and released the test vehicle at an altitude of about 95,000 feet, and the engine's air intake was opened. The engine ignited and the aircraft then accelerated away from the rocket reaching Mach 6.83. With this flight, the X-43A became the fastest free-flying air-breathing aircraft in the world. We hope you enjoyed the video and want to know which of these was your favorite. If you liked the video, then click subscribe and turn on notifications and you'll be the first to know when a new video arrives. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.